The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light, sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ustadi al-Aziz. Um, inshallah, we're continuing. Uh, we were left at Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam approaching the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And as you've mentioned, quoting from the book, um, Amir al-Mu'minin was very shy and uh, for three days he'd go. So on the third day, eventually the Holy Prophet understood why Amir al-Mu'minin was coming for. So um, he got the proposal, he went to back to Fatima al-Zahra sallallahu alayhi wa alayha. And Fatima al-Zahra uh, indicated through her silence because that she approved and the Holy Prophet went back to Amir al-Mu'mineen. Oh, there was something you wanted to mention before him, before the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, uh, going back to Amir al-Mu'mineen, the Malaika, yeah. something you wanted to add. So inshallah we'll continue uh, from there. Bismillah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين um, Yes, uh, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله went uh, back uh, to Imam Ali عليه السلام and he reported that uh, Fatima Zahra uh, has approved because the, the, the last thing that Fatima Zahra said was, at least the final thing was that, I am content with whatever Allah and His Messenger are content with. Uh, so uh, the Prophet ﷺ said that, went back and said that to Imam Ali salam, and to, in order to um, clarify, he said, are you uh, uh, happy to become the husband of Fatima Zahra? And Imam Ali salam says, oh yes, O Rasulullah, yes, O Rasulullah. And then the, the, the Prophet uh, said, before you came today, uh, one of the malaika, one of the angels came down to me. And... Um, Does it say which angel, by the way, doctor? Uh, yes, and uh, I'll tell you. It okay. says that um, uh, he came down and he said to the Prophet that um, your status... Uh, in the south of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the highest and there is nothing higher than that. And um, the, the Prophet uh, uh, said to him, um, uh, O Jibra'il, I hadn't seen you in this form before. Because Jibra'il used to appear to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi in different forms, even in the, in the, in the, in the, in the form of uh, 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 some individuals. Um, which we'll, we won't go into at the moment. And it was like one of some of the Sahaba who were, who were good, he used to, and they passed away, they used to, he appeared to them like that. Um, so he said, I haven't seen you in, that, in this form before. And uh, uh, the, the angel said to him, I'm not Jibra'il. My name is Sarsail. Um, and I have, uh, Allah has dispatched me and I've uh, come to uh, instruct you or to give the good news of the marriage between the light and the light. And uh, I've just given, come down to, to say this, but Jibra'il and Mikail and Israfil and another Malaika, Ismail, uh, they will come down along with 70,000 Malaika, uh, they will come down to you uh, in a short while. And the Prophet says, says, uh, oh, Sa'il, what do you mean by when you say the marriage of the nur with the nur, the light with the light. Um, uh, he said, I mean uh, the marriage of Fatima and Ali. So the Prophet ﷺ wanted to make sure that when this narrated is, when this narration, this report, 
this hadith is narrated, he didn't he didn't suffice by saying mm. light with light, and a thousand years later, people when they read it, they, it's a bit ambiguous as to what uh, they, they mean by. Talking about oh, it was the wedding of George and uh, Sarah, whatever. Okay. Yeah. So he specifically says, what do mm. you mean by light with light? And uh, so Sa'il replies, it's, uh, the, the marriage of Fatima and Ali alayhi salam. See, that's the thing uh, that, subhanAllah, they, the, the Holy Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, them being aware constantly of the future, and obviously them being given Ahsan. knowledge, which we don't know, yeah. they understood of the complications that would occur that's throughout right. the time. So they would emphasize and make these obvious questions. questions yeah. Just for us to hear for it, not benefit. for them or anyone else, it's for us. Exactly. It's, it's, it's all for, for, for the benefit Allah. of the reader who would come in a thousand years' Allah. time or two thousand years' Allah. time. Allah. How, how truly um, blessed we are. Inshallah. Um, <coughs> uh, the, the narration says that when uh, uh, the um, Sir Sa'il was saying goodbye and he left, he, uh, the Prophet says, I saw it's written on his shoulder, there is no God but Allah, Muhammad is his messenger. And he will be supported um, by Ali, uh, who is his wasi and his, uh, uh, his, his the, the authority after him. Um, and when I saw this, I said, since when this is written on your shoulder? Um, he says that this was written 24,000 years before the creation of Adam. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Imagine. Okay. Um, then when he left, when Sasail left, Jibrail along with Mikail and Israfil and Ismail and 70,000 Malaika arrived. And um, first of all, they gave like some perfume uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu and they said that this perfume is for Fatima Zara alayhi salam. And then they brought a document from a paradise and it says, um, I, and I said to Jibrail, what is this? It says, it, it, this is what was written in, the, in this document. O Muhammad, Allah uh, chose you for the Risala, for the mission, for conveying his message, Allah's message to the people, uh, to creation. And then he chose a brother for you, and a wazir, a vicegerent, uh, and a helper, and a son-in-law, so that you would marry Fatima to him. And he said, now this is just before Ali ibn Abi Talib comes for the third time. And he says, uh, oh my beloved Jibrail, who is this second person? Who is this brother um, and wazir and help, helper? What's his name? Uh, he says, he is your brother in religion and your cousin in blood. Uh, he is Ali ibn Abi Talib. So again, another example. That, Emphasizing again. Uh, to, first of all, he did it with Sir Sa'id, which that was some, if you like, some time ago, short time before. Now Jibra'il comes. Uh, he brings this document. And this is what Allah says. Allah has his chosen prophet for, for the mission. He's chosen Imam Ali. He's chosen his, someone uh, to help the Prophet to be his brother and to be his helper and uh, to be his son-in-law and he instructs him to marry Fatima to him, he asks, who is he? And the Prophet sallallahu asks, who is he? Just to make sure that who, uh, uh, these are all come from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Um, okay, so <coughs> the Prophet, now that, this, is the, this is the quote which the Prophet made to Imam Ali when he said to him, Bef before you came, this is what happened. He again emphasized, are you content to be the husband of Fatima? He says, yes, I am content. And then he goes on to say that you, Ali, you will marry Fatima and uh, she <coughs> is uh, Sayyidat Nisa al Alameen and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you two sons. Uh, they are the masters of, uh, of the youth of paradise. They are Hassan and Hussein. The Ummah will wrong them and do uh, 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 oppress, them. oppress them and um, um, Hussein will be killed. Um, in a, in, a, in a brutal way. So, right from the outset, the Prophet ﷺ is telling Imam Ali as to what's going to happen. But he continues that. Um, but I'm pretty sure, once again, maybe that narration was not intended for the ears of Amir al but for us. I'm sure. 
I'm sure it's all for and and listen it says that the the successes after me uh, are 12 the number of the months of, of a year uh, and also um, uh, Isa ibn Maryam uh, Isa the son of Maryam will descend and will pray behind the last Imam the last one of them of the 12 Imams so in a, in a nutshell very briefly the Prophet sallallahu says to Imam Ali what's going to happen if, um, um, because of this um, as a result of this marriage this holy marriage between these two um, um, holy individuals this is the outcome uh, the 12 Imams they're there for the guidance of the people and eventually Isa ibn Maryam uh, one of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come and pray behind Imam al-Mahdi ajal Allah ta'ala farajah al-Sharif Allah ta'ala farajah al-Sharif inshaAllah ya Rabbi now what if you don't mind I'd like to talk about the mahr about the mahr now mahr um, before we start uh, we tried finding the translation for it in English mm. and we found the word dowry mm. which we use in English but however what I've uh, realized is that we're using a l wrong word because mm. the terminology the definition of dowry is a property uh, slash money or anything of value whether given by the bride to the husband mm. which is the other way around in Islam in Islam because we don't have anything in Islam uh, of uh, an obligation from the bride to, to the husband so um, maybe it's best to just describe yeah. what mahar means um, yes mahar is um, uh, something that uh, the husband is required to give to the uh, to the wife uh, uh, to the bride if you like uh, it's an obligatory uh, uh, deed it's an obligation for the husband to do that um, and uh, marriage would not be complete without uh, this mahr uh, as you rightly mentioned dowry is not the right term for it dowry means something completely different it's, uh, whatever the origin may be whether it's in India or other cultures um, uh, it's, uh, as you mentioned it's something that the, the bride gives to the husband whereas we don't have that in Islam in Islam is the husband gives the mahar uh, he's obliged to give mahar um, to the wife and that could be money gold, silver or even taking her for ziyara or even teach her there were cases where um, the, the muhajirin and ansar they used to say we are poor we can't give mahar he says the prophet used to say do you know some passage of the quran some surahs of the quran they used to say yes he says okay the, your mahar to her is to teach her those surahs of the quran okay so basically to give so it's something not, it's not just about money or it's not just about money it's any it um, could be anything it, it's something that he he's obliged to give and that is called mahar or it's called sadaq um, another term for it um, and Which that seals the marriage. It's like the signature on the contract, basically. I don't know whether it's like that, but it's it, without it, it cannot be. We, marriage has to it will be complete with with uh, with mahar or sadaq. He, he, it's an obligation that the husband should give to the wife. Um, and um, in this case, in the case of the mahar or sadaq, Fatma Zara alayhi salam, um, the Prophet said, "What would you give?" as a mahar for uh, my daughter Fatima and he said I have uh, a horse a camel a sword and an armor and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi said that um, subhanallah this is all your, your belonging your possessions um, you need uh, the sword uh, and uh, the horse for when you go to jihad for you to do battle to defend Islam, Islam. Um, you need um, the camel for uh, travel or also for giving water, irrigating uh, uh, the farm or the palm uh, trees. Um, a, but you don't need the armor. So go and sell the armor and bring the money here. Um, but Amir Mumin said, Oh Rasulullah, <coughs> this armor would be worth not, nothing more than 500 dirham. 
400 dirhams is five hundred silver coins. Um, this is not much. So basically, he wanted like to sell um, the horse or the mm. camel, which will bring uh, more money than uh, five hundred dirham. Um, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi said, "I will marry Fatima to you with that. You know, I will be happy with that five hundred dirham." And that and that and, and that mahar became the sunnah, sunnah. the tradition mahar -sunnah. for the weddings. Yes. Um, However, unfortunately, we could maybe a bit out of the topic discuss with regards to where we've ended up in uh, with our communities nowadays mm. and mm. Uh, unfortunately s certain families ask for uh, extravagant amounts mm. of money it's, it's a, it, sometimes it's so ridiculous and we feel sorry for men who are being struggling they have to work for years mm. to gather up that amount just mm. to satisfy mm. Mm. and it's truly it's, it's truly a shame when when you see the best the purest, the best of personalities, the best of existence. And Fatima to Zahra were accepted 400, 500 uh, dirham. Mm. Then who are we to ask for more than that? Mm. In my humble opinion, that, that, that should have been the maximum anyone could ask for. Yeah. Um, uh, it's true that um, yeah, this became, the, became known as the Mahr Sunnah. Mm. Um, the, the Prophet Sallallahu always encouraged or that the mahr be a small amount or at least stick to this mahr sunnah uh, and it's true that these days people ask for extravagant amounts um, when you said it should be it should be that that's the maximum we don't have that in islam yani it's been left open it's been recommended uh, the prophet sallallahu mm. alayhi wa recommended that uh, they use this uh, as a sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mahr sunnah and it will be barakah in that marriage, because if, if they choose this mahr, which is 500 silver coins, um, and um, this will be equivalent, if I remember correctly, uh, one and a quarter kilograms of silver. Um, and that will be roughly about four or five hundred dollars. That's the sort of money you're talking about. Mm. Um, but anyway, um, uh, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu did not make it uh, uh, a must this mahr so um, people can ask more but there there, there have been numerous um, uh, hadiths and so on to say to emphasize it, to keep the mahr low um, at least there are indications that if you want to give uh, to give if you are able to give gifts uh, uh, to the bride on top of the mahr sunnah so you keep the mahr sunnah which is 500 dirham Okay, so that and separate it, the gifts, okay. and, and so that you will have the barakah of this mahr. Your, the mahr will be of, of this marriage will be like the mahr of the marriage of Fatima Zahra to Ma'sum, and the marriage of Fatima Zahra Imam Ali alayhi salam. And so it's recommended that scholars these days say, use that mahr, mahr sunnah, five hundred silver coins. Okay, but if you are well off, if you are able, you can give on top of that as as a gift, not part of the mahr, but you can give gifts to the bride. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, and by doing so, uh, you've, you've made sure you, you, are, you, you stuck to this mahr, you use this mahr of Fatima Zahra for your marriage. Um, so inshallah, people will sort of do that. Um, but yes, the Prophet didn't ban anything higher than that. He didn't say it's a must to do this. Mm -hmm. It's a sunnah. Uh, and, um, and of course, you see the barakah that happened in their marriage um, and despite all the animosities um, we, s we see the end result of the barakah of that marriage today and inshallah we'll continue to see it until uh, Yom Al-Qiyam. Um, uh, uh, so it's important that you know the faithful try to do their best to uh, abide by the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and one of the sunnah is in marriage is this uh, mahra sunnah and, it's, and, and one of the most important thing is not to focus on the materialistic side because at the end of the day look look, look at the great example of uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen and Fatima al-Zahra you had the wealthiest of people come approach the Holy Prophet and the Holy Prophet was not interested in their money mm. and as you mentioned uh, about um, how the Holy Prophet for example turns uh, some stones into uh, precious gems 
just to prove a point mm. that you know what mm. we're not interested in this mm. Mm. if this what we wanted we could have had the whole world mm. it belongs to us anyway mm. yeah yeah so it's beautiful how we can learn from these um, from these incidents and apply them in our life and always think that the spiritual uh, the spiritual um, value of, of life cannot be compared with the materialistic one there's more important things than money. You can have money, but you can't have, for example, money can't give you knowledge. Money, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> Unfortunately, nowadays you can pay to uh, be, um, what's the word, to, to, to get the door open for you in a university or whatever to study, but it can't necessarily give you knowledge. It can't give you wisdom, health. How many people lose their health? They have all the money in the world. They can't get it back. You know, and subhanAllah. And, and it's very beautiful for us to keep reminding ourselves that there's more to life than just uh, striving to acquire materials where eventually we're just going to leave them behind because we're going to pass away yeah. one day. Yeah. Ahsantum. Of course, uh, material... Sorry, go on. No, Bismillah. I just want to comment on that. Material is important, but we shouldn't give... Uh, you know, we shouldn't be attached it's to... It's important to when it's required yeah. and needed in life. No, exactly. But well, shouldn't should be the purpose of that's life. That's right. Yeah. Ahsantum. Yes. So the mahar was decided at uh, 400 to 500 uh, dirhams. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam went and sold his armor. And then? Um, it is said that Amin got up and, and took his armor so that he could sell it. And um, uh, he took it to the market and he had the armor on his shoulder. <coughs> and then he came across someone and um, he, he approached Imam Ali alayhi salam and says, uh, Ya Ali, um, this is very interesting, he, he knew his name. Ya Ali, um, will you, uh, have you brought this armor for sale? He said, yes. Uh, and he said, um, what, uh, what are you asking for it? Uh, for this, uh, Imam Ali says, uh, 500 dirham. And then he got a pouch of uh, uh, silver coins. He said, this is 500 dirham, he took the armor. Mm. And um, Imam Ali salam took the money, took the 500 coins and went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and he placed it on the thing and this is the 500 points. Mm. And he said, who did you sell it to? Imam, he said, he asked the Prophet said to Imam Ali salam, who did you sell the armor to? He said, oh Rasulullah, someone, a stranger. He saw me and he, uh, and I, he was a buyer and I sold it to him. He said, do you know him? He said, no. He said, that was Jibrail. Um, uh, who, who has been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to go and buy the armor from you. And um, so the money that you have got from is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. And God knows, maybe then, one day in Jannah we go, inshallah, and we see the armor just somewhere. Okay, okay you yeah. jump too quickly. <laughs> then the Prophet sallallahu <laughs> alayhi wa alayhi <laughs> said, this is the armor. <coughs> Jibreel brought it to me Allah and take you back. So yes, he, um, which of course this shows uh, the Prophet Sallallahu says this is an honor, for, an honor for my daughter that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala comes paid for the dowry. For, paid for the dowry. He Allah comes Allah and buys. Uh, 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 not, you said dowry. It's not dowry. Uh, see, for the mahar. That's the, that's the thing, yeah. uh, Doctor. It's just that we're, because we're accustomed to using that yes. word. So yeah. the mahar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paid the mahar. Yes. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Um, can we continue or I've got another thing to say? Inshallah we'll, we'll call it in and, and we'll continue uh, okay. next time. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi tayyibin al It is said that uh, Jibreel alayhi salam went back to, to the heavens <clears throat> and this time came back with a document uh, in which it, is, it was written that Allah has set the mahr of Fatima al-Zahra to be the shafa'a of the sinners of the Shia of her father.